Grace, mercy, and peace are yours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I don't expect you to remember this, but over the past five or six weeks, in all of the gospel readings that we've heard, Jesus was trying to retreat for a little while, to get some alone time, perhaps to pray, perhaps to teach his disciples. And every week, people found him. Today is no different. Today, Jesus, again, is trying to get away from the crowds, have some alone time. And we read, the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law had come from Jerusalem and gathered around Jesus. Now, if Jesus was living according to his human nature, I think he'd be a little frustrated. I mean, can you imagine? All I want is some alone time. Why can't they leave me alone? It has to happen to you. You just want an hour to yourself. Why can't the kids quit knocking on the door? Why doesn't the phone stop ringing? Why are mom and dad always asking me to do more and more and more? I just want to be alone. But Jesus, I'm assuming here, used his divine virtues of patience. And he wasn't real frustrated when he saw the crowd gathering around him yet again. Slightly different In our lives, we probably have all known someone uh, who we just really didn't want to see, okay? Uh, Take, for example, we're walking around Menards, and you look down the aisle, and there they are, and you just hope that they don't see you and come to talk to you. And I don't mean to be mean. I'm just saying this is our human nature. Because every time these people talk to you, they say something that irritates you. And you don't want to do that. Jesus looked up and he saw the Pharisees. And the Pharisees always needled Jesus. They came to Jesus and they pointed out things and then they made some comment that went, and got right under, you would think it would get under his skin. Again, Jesus did not react according to his human nature, but apparently his divine nature of love and mercy, because he accepted the Pharisees when they came. He even listened to their needling questions, and we'll talk about that today. So these two Pharisees walk up to Jesus. The Pharisees are not difficult to understand. They are self-righteous. They believe that they are holier and more religious than most other people. Do you remember the lesson about the Pharisee and the tax collector who went to the temple to pray? So the tax collector is over there praying, the Pharisee is here praying, and we read about his prayer. God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, even that tax collector over there. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. That's what the Pharisees were like. They begin their conversation with Jesus by pointing out to him that they believe they're more righteous than those fishermen friends that Jesus had as his disciples. They just saw the disciples eating without washing their hands. And let me explain. They were walking down a country path. There's grain along the path. And so the disciples put their hands out, peel off some of the grain, get the husks off, pop it in their mouth like you and I would do. Lord, we would never do anything like that. We wouldn't eat unless we ceremonially wash our hands. That's our tradition. I was talking about to the kids. We wash our hands. We would never eat anything. Why do your disciples eat without washing their hands? This first Pharisee steps up to Jesus, and he says, Jesus, look at everything I do. For example, I always keep myself spiritually clean through ceremony and washing. We get a little more explanation uh, from, from the Gospel account of Mark. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. 
When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. The Pharisees were so concerned about being spiritually pure that they continually were washing. Now don't kid yourself. Part of this was also because the Pharisees wanted everybody to, <laughs> to see them washing. Look, oh, look at that man washing his hands. Oh, look, here's another man washing his hands. I just saw him washing his hands a half hour ago. He's doing it again. They were getting the attention that they wanted. Look how spiritually mature I am. Look at what I do. I have like a miniature ceremony every time before I eat. I wash my hands so they're clean before God. They were getting the attention that they wanted. They washed every time they came from the marketplace. You know why? Maybe they bumped into a Gentile. Make them unclean. Better wash. Okay? Or maybe the fruit that they bought and put in their bags to take home. Maybe some non-Jew had touched that produce before they got to it. And so they better wash their hands before they eat. I've got to tell you this. After first service, there was a gentleman who talked to me, and he said, you know, they still do that. He was a baker, and you may know who I'm talking about. He was a baker in downtown Milwaukee, worked in a Jewish bakery. They need, and he he was telling me, in order to wash their hands, they need a two-handled pot. And his, his Jewish friends were using a copper pot with two handles filled with water, And when they came to work, before they touched anything at work, they would pick up this two-handled thing and they would wash their right hand with the water and then take the other handle and wash this. They didn't go under the sink and do this. They had a ceremony. They had a special piece of... of, uh, I can't get the word. To wash their hands. Um, Still doing it today. Trying to please God by ceremonial washing. This Pharisee would look at Jesus and say, you know how religious I am? I bet I wash my hands 20 times a day. Big deal. Following up on the self-centered attitude of that first Pharisee, the second Pharisee would take things just a bit farther. You know, we don't only do those little ceremonies. Sometimes um, there are things we just never would do. For example, I would never eat pork. And I would never have dinner with someone who wasn't Jewish. And I would never buy a garment that was made with two different fabrics or two different kinds of thread. These are all, according to the traditions, those little laws that were made formed kind of a, they called it a hedge. And because of all these little traditions and laws that they were supposed to keep, They always figured they would never break the great Ten Commandments of Moses. So, if I take too many steps this day, well, at least I didn't kill somebody. If I, you know, drink too much water, well, at least I didn't commit adultery. Well, if I don't eat pork, well, at least I didn't tell lies about my neighbor. That's how they thought. They thought they were pleasing God by all these little ceremonies and activities that they were doing. Having made their point that they were more religious and more uh, righteous than others, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the traditions of the elders? What are you going to say to that, Jesus? Okay. They're curious as to why Jesus' disciples aren't living according to the writings of the Mishnah, Now, that's probably a book you haven't heard about. The Mishnah are the writings of the elders. All these different traditions which are meant to help help you keep from breaking the great Ten Commandments. The Pharisees believed if they washed often, prayed often, counted their steps, limited the amount of water they drank, or how much wood they carried, by being concerned about those traditions they would always be righteous in the sight of God. And let us add that such things also made them think they truly were better than everybody else. Now you know the answer to this question I'm going to ask. Was Jesus impressed by what they did or didn't do? 
Of course not. This is what Jesus said. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to traditions. Certainly Jesus, who grew up Jewish, who was a rabbi himself, knew all these ceremonies and traditions of the elders. But he chastises the Pharisees for their self-righteous attitude. In effect, he says, God is not interested in how you act. He wants your hearts. He wants your love. He wants your praise. God doesn't want to see or hear all the things you have done he wants you to hear what He has done for you. He sent His Son, Jesus. In their conceit, in their hopeless concerns to please God and keep His Ten Commandments, the Pharisees have lost their love for God. They love the things they do. They love themselves. They love the traditions. And now Jesus points out to everybody who's gathered there, especially the Pharisees, nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. A person doesn't become spiritually clean to God, or spiritually unpleasing to God, because of the circumstances around him. Whether his hands are dirty, whether he's been in contact with a believer, what he wears, what he eats, how far he walks. Jesus says that God is displeased when our hearts are far from him, when we fail to recognize his gracious love and his daily blessings. Jesus warns that we are unclean because of the sinful nature that is always in us. For from within, out of the heart, come evil thoughts, immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy and slander, arrogance and folly. These evils come from inside. They make a man unclean. Now we too sometimes let ourselves believe that we're okay, that we're all right with God because, well, we come to church every week. When there's an offering, we give regularly, cheerfully. If there's a request for a special offering, we give for that too. We volunteer at church, at school, maybe for some other community center. You give to charities. You help little old ladies across the street. I don't know if that happens much anymore, but now it's probably pushing her cart back from the Walmart parking lot to the store. We're pretty good. We do pretty good stuff. And here we go. We are not like those other kids at school who I saw cheating. We're not like those lazy people at work. We're different than they are. I have never shot anybody like those people in Chicago. I've never stolen a car and got into a police chase and made the police car flip over. Don't let such thoughts run through your head, ever. From the great one of, of injuring a police officer all the way down to pushing carts in the store. You know what that sounds like? God, look at me. Look at all I've done. Glad I'm not like other people. We don't want that kind of attitude in our hearts. Our, God's love for us is not based on how often we have done good things, how good the things were that we did. God doesn't bless us because we haven't been caught doing the sinful things that run through our heads. God doesn't bless us because we have some many ceremonies that we carry out a lot during the week. Jesus was clear when he spoke to the Pharisees, our hands don't need ceremonial washing. Our hearts need to be cleansed. We need a Savior 
who forgives all of our sins and transgressions. That's Jesus. We need someone to stand before God and say, Look, Father, I know that these have sinned against your commandments. I know that they have not been the best example of Christian virtue. But my blood on the cross paid for their redemption. This morning, you were standing, and I stood up here, and I said to you, your sins are all forgiven. You have been cleansed. You are righteous before God, not because of anything you've done or not done, but because of Jesus, who has given himself for you. God so loved the world, he gave his only son. That's the thing we praise him for. So with pure hearts, we praise our Heavenly Father, our Savior Jesus, and the Holy Spirit who has brought us to faith and keeps us in faith. Amen.